Okay, I don't know what the, the that light up there is all about, but uh, just just try to ignore it, you know. Just try to ignore it. So I forgot to uh, make a thing for the. Uh, no, no, no. no. Thing, yeah. I forgot. We are live, right? Yeah, we're live. Yeah. There's a the, the little chat thing. Uh, took a while to pop up, so I was a bit confused. But um. Yeah, I uh, forgot to make a uh, one of these for what we're doing today, which it's fine, doesn't matter. Um, I think it's gonna get on my nerves though. If it stays, it's like, why is it there? I don't know what it is. <clears throat> I don't know what it is, but sure, shit ain't butter. So today we are looking over, well, looking over the uh, Dark Souls custom mod for Tabletop Simulator, which I created. It's Dark Souls the board game, but in digital form on Tabletop Simulator. And uh, I just released a big update for it last week. And... You know. Uh, I thought I would... Since I worked so hard on it, and, you know, it's done, it's out. I thought I would, uh... Go over it. What the fuck? Get out of here. I thought I'd go over it... On stream. To showcase some of the... Uh, features. New and... Not new. Uh play test some things and if anyone had any questions they could ask them or if they had any sort of feedback about things they could tell me right there in the chat so yeah uh allow me to uh get something real quick and then we will get right on that so one second Okay. Is that working? I don't know if it's working. All right. Let us salad. Let's get tabletop simulator up and running. And um I also I should uh, also note that uh, the version of the mod you're about to see is the developer version that I specifically use 
to work on it. Not the uh, official workshop version. The only difference is one one small thing, one small detail, one little thing. Uh, this, 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 this tiny, tiny little thing. You, you won't even notice the difference. Or you will. Either or, it's whatever. <clears throat> did I finish up my work today? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Let's get on over there. Uh, the fuck? Hold on a second. I think I know what the problem. I think I know what the problem is. I think I solved the problem. Oh, yeah, the black screen. That is also an issue I should probably fix. Hold on. Uh, mm, yeah. Yeah! Wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There we go. Ah, what the? What is it? Huh? What is that? What? I don't know what that is. Oh well. It's fine. It doesn't matter. So. Seriously, that light is pissing me off. Let me just turn that on. Like. It hasn't been there before, but now it's just. It's, it's bothering me. Is it still there? Kinda. It is mostly gone. It's gone enough to where it's not going to be a problem. Okay. Here's the mod. All right. It's a big fucking table with a lot of fucking things. <laughs> so, um, I wanted a big table because this is a big game. In real life, you need a pretty good sized table for this game. Like, it gets pretty ridiculous. You can't just play it on any poker table. Or any table, period. But, uh, yeah, so I got a big table. It's, uh, by Mr. Stump, I think. Also, the, uh, the only difference between the, uh, the dev version and the official, the uh, actual release version of this mod is uh, right here. Wilhelm Roswell's Nameless King expansion, which is getting added in a little uh, 
little patch. Uh, not a major update. So this is this will this will hit soon. It's just a little patch, a little 6.5 I call it, because the uh, the update is called Episode Six, Return of the Jester, which uh, if you couldn't guess is a little joke that's Star Wars related. Yeah, so, you'll get this guy soon. I just finished him today, this morning. Uh, as soon as I saw this beauty, I, I, I was like, please. I would like this to be in my mod. Will you allow me to do so? And they're like, yeah. And I was like. Because, simply put, this is the most stunning fan-made, like, expansion I've ever seen. Because, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, these ones, these are all made by other people. Uh, I've made slight adjustments to some aspects of them, like, uh, Gundir and Soul of Cinder had, like, poopy models i just gave them better models some cards i gave a custom card back because they're missing one <clears throat> uh, most of the enemies but uh uh a lot of these a lot of these are like uh older fan-made stuff like if i go to uh like gundir here look at the card you can see like it's a uh, you know, it looks like a card. It looks like an actual data card. The difference is being, uh, you can see like the font is a little weird looking. It's a little like dirty and old looking. Like, uh, not old like uh, how they normally look, which is like this. This is a scan or image or something. Uh, whoever was the first person to uh, upload the core game assets to the workshop uh they like took a picture or scanned it or something and this is what we've had to work with for a while you can see it's like it's a little crusty but it works it's legible it's perfectly fine and you have the custom ones which are also fine they're legible they're great um and you got like some of the really not you uh you not you. Uh, you? Not you. Uh, you. Not you. Uh, you. No. Oh, I know. Where are you at? Damn, where the hell you at? I do. Where did it go, actually? I'm concerned. Uh, uh, oh. You. Yeah, that's it. You got cards like this where you can see it's clearly homebrewed. Like, it looks nothing like the original, but, like, you know, you could still look at it and say, oh, yeah, I know how this works in the game. <clears throat> and then, uh, some time pass, and I, my dumbass comes along, and I'm like, hey, I want a mod for this game. So I get stuff like, uh, like this. Look how shitty that looks. That is the most crusty of the crust cards. Compare that to like any of these. And there's a clear level of inferiority with this card. Uh, there was no intention of anything serious. This was a joke. Entirely a joke. Such a joke that this exists. The dragon form, which I love the dragon form, and I respectfully have to decline making them behavior cards. Well, not behavior, uh, uh, just cards because it's funny, it's a joke, it's a running gag. If I look at the berserker, the berserker is kind of similar to the other cards where it's crusty, but then I get around to like when I truly started doing stuff like the summoner 
you can already see an improvement in quality. Like, that looked good. And, uh, Sandy's just pretty much the same. You go to the Hunter, that look even better. Because I've had more experience. I really spent time working on it. And then you have now, with this update, the Alchemist. It's very clean. And the Magician. They are much more crisp and clear looking. I've also uh, adopted the black background. <clears throat> because the real life car, like if you notice these have like a blue tint to them. Like they're bluish in color. But the actual cards are not blue. They are black. And I made it upon a, my, I put it on myself to get that point across with uh well starting with the these bosses from the previous update the hydra osiris and medir where i made their cards black because the cards are black that's actually what color they are and so yeah, for some reason the a lot of the stuff in the uh on Steamforge like when they had their online like free to use assets before the Wave 3 expansions came out. They had the print and play files that people used to make certain things like uh Kirk. And grab Kirk. This is where it pretty much started. You can see it's more clear than any of the other cards that came before it. Uh, minus my most recent cards, because I've worked with this format for a while now. The This format's the most clear one yet, but it's blue. I noticed one day when I was like, I was sitting there thinking to myself, why are some of these cards black? Like, uh, for instance, some of the fan-made stuff. That one's a bit dark, or you can see. They're kind of like that, actually. It's like not full black, but like very dark color. Almost black. And even the giant dad I looked at, I was like, it's just black. The card backs are black. And then it hit me, and I took a card from the actual board game up there in my closet and looked at it and saw it was black. So then I swapped to black with this expansion, and i am kind of been working towards making the cards black with every new edition. <clears throat> but I digress. So... The main point of this story is one day I went to the Dark Souls the Board Game Reddit. I don't go there very often. I don't use Reddit very often. I don't use any type of social media that often. But uh, I came across this. Look at how fucking gorgeous that looks. The icons are crisp. They're crystal clear. You could see the uh, the description box it doesn't just blur into the background like the rest of the cards. The font looks just right. It's perfect in every way. Clear icons. The artwork's beautiful. And so I looked into it and I thought, how is this possible? How do they make it look this good? And it's flip, by the way. It's flip side. I know. Uh... But then I found out, I, after digging a bit more, I found out there was a Discord for that subreddit. I joined the Discord. I didn't know it existed. A bunch of people from the subreddit are on there. And uh, I saw assets 
for the the cards from official like Steamforge PDF documents, and I was like, wow, that is amazing. If I knew about this literally before I updated the mod, uh, I would have used those. I will use those going forward in the future. Hint, hint. But, uh, yeah, so, I was, uh, I was proud of how good my cards looked until Wilhelm Rosel just, uh, showed up and bitch slapped me with quality. <laughs> but yeah, so, one thing, uh, uh, one of the original points of the way I set up this table, but also something I was thinking of going against was you could see everything is just strewn out for you to access. I intended for it to just be this huge, impressive display where you look at it and you think, wow, they got everything on this table. They even got the, the, the backer exclusive metal aggro token. Wow! And that was the point. But, but, here's the thing. Uh, I've started noticing uh, people recently, uh, even a bit like a year or so ago, started asking where certain things were at. Like, they didn't know how to find things. And, well, this is like a couple of years back, actually. And so, the Book of Custom was one of the ideas I came up with. By the way, this uh, this cover... Just beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. But I came up with the Book of Custom, which is essentially just a compendium of all the stuff in the mod. How to find stuff, how to use stuff, where it is, what it is. And, you know, has so much shit. Uh, let me just... Here, the table overview. This is uh, meant to tell you where all the stuff is at in the mod which if you the problem I found with this at some point was this makes sense to me because I am a super Dark Souls the board game like fanatic and I know the difference between core wave 2 wave 3 and wave 4 but I'm willing to bet most people don't most people are probably thinking especially people who got into it late are thinking, what the heck is wave 2? What's wave 3? What's wave 4? And for people who know what that is, this is helpful. For people who don't know what that is, this is pointless. This is worthless. The only thing you know is, these are official, and these are not. So, one of my ideas was to completely reformat the table like clean it up like turn all of this into like a little little thing i have been looking into mods for tabletop simulator things to help sort and filter different things in a mod uh finding ways to you know pull things so essentially my idea is uh, I can save space on the table, but still have all this shit, but have it more easily accessible to not only people who know what the stuff is, but people who don't. For instance, my ideal vision for this table is, uh, you find a little thing, maybe here or something, and there's a search bar, maybe, and... Or maybe it just works like a container where you right click and you open the search and you can just scroll through it or you can search for exactly what you want and just pull it out of the bag. <clears throat> or whatever it is. Um, I've also thought about, you know, finding some sort of scripting uh, lingo to help do some stuff like that don't know exactly what I want to do, but it is something I want to do, where I want to relay out this table, make it minimalistic, if you would. 
so yeah, uh, that's something I have in mind. Uh, I thought about doing it in this last update. Maybe I'll do it in the uh, the patch upcoming patch. Is a uh, mess with this stupid music player. I don't know how this music player works. I tried to get it to work. You can see Souls of Fire. That's been there like for a while. Does it work? Okay, it sounds slow. I'm pretty sure the track's actually supposed to be faster than that. I couldn't figure this thing out like a couple updates ago, so I just gave up on it. I thought, eh, people will just listen to their own music anyway. Who needs it? So, maybe I'll work on that if people want me to. I don't know. I don't really care for it. I listen to, uh, you know, some Dark Souls ambience in the background, like of my own browser and whatnot while playing. You could also just uh, go here, grab yourself a tablet, and just go onto YouTube and look for your music and just play it that way. But, uh, yeah, so. Another uh, upcoming thing I plan on doing is... Uh, I'm not sure how much I should talk about it, but I am going to talk about it because <clears throat> it's something I want to do. Uh, I've sp especially been inspired after seeing, I mean, I was already going to do it, but after seeing uh, Wilhelm Roswell's uh, Nameless King and all those official assets, I'm really, really uh, not looking forward to, but... Um, inspired yeah i'm inspired more than ever to work on this this next this other project i want to do which is uh what i call dark souls custom remastered oh yeah it's happening <laughs> but unlike uh dark souls remastered where the you know the graphics don't really get better it just increases the frame rate you know adds a bonfire and improves the matchmaking a bit you know uh, I'm actually going to improve digitally the uh, the quality of all the cards in the mod. Uh, the core game, all the stuff, including my cards. With uh, First of all, I'm going to try and uh, do something unheard of in my case, which is make a goddamn template. I have not made a template for any of my cards I kind of just do them I make a card and then I save it and then I swap things out and then I save another card and it's just a mess it's actually a mess you should see how long it takes for me to just dig through layers in Photoshop <clears throat> but I want to digitally remaster all the cards especially uh, multiple people have pointed out that the uh, the Dark Root and Iron Keep cards are, uh, yeah, they're not forking as well. They're not uh, the best looking because they're like, they're clearly just run on a bad scanner or a picture was taken of them with a camera. Like, it's not so bad in terms of, like, that's pretty bad. Uh, this isn't too bad. The main issue, in my opinion, comes from the treasure cards. Uh, actually, uh, did I do that? Wait, did I do that? I didn't do that. What? Who did that? That's... Hold on. Uh... No. No, I don't keep his added late. Wait. 
Wait, wait, whoa, hold on. Hold on a second. Who did this? <laughs> who did, who actually did this? Uh, this, this, uh, was not like this before, I don't think. I'm pretty sure the back, uh, the carpet matched the drapes. I'm pretty sure. It looked like this. Why are they different size? That's annoying. I've been dealing with weird, weird side, uh, weird wrong sides cards, like, uh, for a bit just recently. It's, I don't know why, how to explain it. It's so bizarre. I don't know why some of the cards are being resized weird. <clears throat> but, uh,. Okay, so what 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 to do first? <clears throat> I suppose I should go over, first off, I should go over some of the new stuff in this update. <clears throat> well, right here, you can see I recommend to check out the book of custom always. Always check out the book of custom because it's useful. It has listed page numbers now, so if you like Went to the, uh, not the cover. If you went to the, uh, the contents here, which is growing, man. Holy shit, it's growing. Uh, uh, oh man, how do I use Jester Thomas? You go to how to use custom content using Jester Thomas, page 17. Let me go to page 17. <clears throat> and right here, bam, using Jester Thomas. Jester Thomas is a new phantom and a new invader. Mechanically, there is nothing different from the official phantoms and invaders, so use them the same way. The main difference is the usage of Lingering Flame and Warmth Tokens. Warmth Tokens are placed on the node the caster is, and will stay there until it's used again, or until the end of the encounter. <coughs> My, th ugh. My throat is puffy, I don't know. You need some water. <clears throat> Lingering flame tokens operate the same way as traps, but are placeable and don't harm the user. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. Simple. You just find the stuff in the book. You read it. You see what it does. Although, um... <clears throat> one thing I am not certain of... Uh, is if I there's a certain thing I was going to put in the rules for dungeon mode but I don't remember if I put it in Okay, no, I put it in. <clears throat> so let me um, go over some of the new stuff. Let me start with uh, Alchemist. Sure, yeah, let's go over that. <clears throat> Page 16. I don't need to read this. I literally wrote my bad. I literally wrote this shit. But uh, this is what you need to understand the alchemist. Let me just grab them and show you. I always recommend copy pasting the host. Copy paste a board that you're going to use. And alchemist is seven. So right away you'll notice they use lettered stats instead of numbered stats. Also, they have four different stats. That's not unusual if you've played my custom classes before. <clears throat> as well as different icons. Let me just pull them over. <clears throat> so 
So the alchemist, you have your, uh, let me just lock it so it doesn't go anywhere. Your potion maker's garb, which is your armor. You have your novice recipes, which match the icon, goes there. Your throwing vial, same. And then you have your ingredients. You start with six ingredients. You put them face down, right there, shuffle them. And you're set for the alchemist. <clears throat> Uh, well, you know, you need your other shit, like these. You'll need, uh, this. You'll need all that stuff. Anyway, uh. <clears throat> so, the Alchemist. This class has been the reason the update took so long. For numerous reasons. I've mentioned them in previous streams, but... Um, long story short, <clears throat> they got re, I completely redid them like three times <clears throat> in concept. And I struggled trying to figure out how I wanted to make the recipe in vial cards. <clears throat> so... Crimson, how do I play the alchemist? Well, I'm glad you didn't ask. So, like the other classes, you take their treasure, you put it in the treasure deck. Let me just grab a, a treasure there. Treasure deck. You take their class cards, you throw it in. And then you go over here, you take the alchemist ingredients deck. And you throw that in. <clears throat> right away you got a good chunk of cards the chances of you drawing an alchemist card are pretty high yeah see third one seed of a giant tree <clears throat> which needs A in toxicity so the stats just work the same you level them up to use things <clears throat> the class however functions differently you shuffle these, and then you draw five of them to form your hand. <clears throat> and from here, you decide what to do on your turn. On your turn, you draw until you have five. And uh, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory, but let me give you a demonstration. So, let's grab this guy. I didn't want to grab your card, so I just wanted to grab you. Let's get a crossbow hollow. So, you're in an encounter. You have an enemy. The stream has completely lost... It's fucking frames. What the hell happened? Yeah, I, I could tell OBS. It disconnected in case you were wondering. Okay, it reconnected. Did it? Doesn't seem like it. It said it did, but it doesn't seem like it. No, it definitely didn't. This fucking shit. This is why I literally could not stream in November. 
this shit right here. Is it going to... Is it going up? Is it going to reconnect? Is it good? That... What? What I'm looking at doesn't make any sense. Are you, are you fucking good? Piece of shit, man. Fucking American internet. We don't make sure it's good. Still green, okay. Fuck you. So where was I? It's your turn. You have five cards in your hand. You play two of them with matching symbols. And they do what you have them do. If I use two combustion pedals to attack this crossbow hollow, I would roll two blacks for damage. Okay? There you are. He's dead. Now, uh, let's say I had a teammate and I used the secondary effect, which is a black to aid. The skull and crossbones is a destruction based. The, uh, the crosses are like aiding based. Uh, use the second effect, you add two blacks to an ally's roll for attack. So then you just uh, put them in a discord pile somewhere. I don't know, you can put it wherever you want. And then at the start of your next turn, you draw to five. And then if you can't, you just... If you can't draw five cards, you take all your cards, reshuffle them to form a new deck, then draw five more. <clears throat> this just gets a little annoying early on because you start with six ingredients. And uh, right there on the top left is your deck limit. The starting armor for the alchemist, you can hold eight cards in your deck. So let me draw uh, Kukuri. Man, I'm getting unlucky at these draws. There we go. So let me put these back in. Put that in. Uh, put that in. Yeah, I've also noticed a problem. <laughs> uh, like and subscribe if you can see the problem. <laughs> yeah, I see a problem. This, uh, this was indeed an oversight. So, yeah, I'm going to need to figure out how to fix that. It doesn't really work as a deck where you don't know what you're drawing if the card backs are different. Now, does it? Yeah, so that's a problem. <clears throat> so, that's the basis of how uh, ingredients work, but there are other things you have to note being the vial tells you your range and other special effects the starting vial makes it so your potions don't inherit the effect of the secondary ingredient so if i use 
combustion plus combustion, it will just be one black die, not two. This is just a, uh, you know, a little barrier to prevent you from just one-shotting everything from the get-go. But as you get stronger, you'll just be completely fucking busted. Like you have a seat of a giant tree where invaders and enemies will now attack each other. Yeah. <laughs> Not uh, something to be taken lightly. The recipes tell you what you can mix. Which, uh, whoa. My spacebar came loose and I went to push it back in and just, yeah. Okay. So, I didn't even press spacebar that time. Keyboard, are you alright? Are you finally kicking it? So, I designed all the recipe books to not get in your way, just kind of guide you. Like, uh, essentially, they're also a little bit effective in making sure you're not breaking the game too much. Because uh, you can see, with novice recipes, it uses the novice ingredients, being the combustum petal bathroom pedal and dark manifest you combine those with any destruction based ingredient and you're allowed to do that you're allowed to combine them with any destruction based so what that means is i could use dark manifest and seed of a giant tree but i cannot use seed of a giant tree and dark manifest uh, you know, in hindsight, it doesn't really matter what order you do them in, just as long as you follow the rules. But you can't just, uh, yeah, I'm going to do damage to you and uh, buff my teammate. You can't do that. It has to be matching symbols. Some ingredients just have different effects, just so you can use them for different things. Like, uh, right there you got corrosion dung pie haha <laughs> yeah poison bright bug here's a perfect example you can't just say i'm gonna hit you for uh three black elemental and then buff myself with a black die for defense like nah you can't do that you have to do destruction destruction or like uh aid aid i i give an actual term in the book what was what i call it actually uh what did i call it you have offensive effect and aiding effect okay offensive and aiding yeah that's it <clears throat> so you can only use matching effects so uh Let me just draw until I get some of the other new stuff. Oh, here, another recipe book. Supportive recipes, which allows you to use more aiding effects. Like, um, you know, with the starting, uh, with the, with the starting recipe book and their starting ingredients, you're very limited when it comes to what you can do to help yourself and your allies. For instance, uh, you can combine this and this, or you can combine this and this, or you can combine two of these, which is pointless. Because this adds elemental, this adds black. So you can add two black dice to an ally's attack, or add one black elemental. Let me uh, draw some more. Another dung pie. Moss fruit. That's a good one. Rhyme blue moss clump. Uh, you're going to be digging for a while with uh, however much shit you have. I'm hope I've t I can't yeah, yeah, there we go. Another recipe book. Uh, I don't really need to show too much of the recipe books. You get the point. They're very straightforward, like I said. So, whoa. Lag spike. 
Henbane. Making use of that calamity. The alchemist is the the first example I know of, at least, that the players have the ability to use calamity and corrosion. Before that being Calamite and Gaping Dragon exclusive effects. I, I could just let me just search through it. Find the shit I'm looking for. Okay, here's one. Here's one. Uh, here's. <clears throat> so here's some examples of other stuff. Here's the alchemist robes, which are, you know, the next level of armor for the alchemist. Uh, it has more elemental resist, but less dodge, but a mod slot, as well as a deck count of 10. Why you'd want to keep this as beyond me because more deck size and mod slot. That's entirely the purpose of the armor pretty much is just to improve yourself, build your deck size. Here's some more vials. The brewing mug. Status effect potions gain one black die for every level up put into toxicity. Now, uh, what that mean? It's a it's a little uh confusing, but it means what it says. Uh, status effect potions. For instance, uh, if I made poison corrosion, it would inflict poison and corrosion, nothing else. But if you're using it with the brewing mug. And let's say my toxicity. What do I need to use these? C, B, uh, uh, B. That's two level ups. Add two black dice to that. You roll the black dice. <clears throat> it's two. So that's two damage plus the status effects. <clears throat> Very handy. Just for a little extra damage, you know? And the Divine Vial, plus one to healing potions for every level up put into Restorative. That's very good, because if you get, uh, it's in here somewhere. <laughs> you get Dried Root. You mix it with any other aiding effect, doesn't matter, because if you can use it, you can use it. And, uh... Restorative is B, that's plus two. So that's five. You heal five health. Mixing two dried root is a lot of health back. Maybe overpowered. That's what we're here for. Might adjust accordingly. <clears throat> Let's grab the transposed. You have the alchemist combat vest, which has a blue physical, two blacks for elemental, three dodge, two mod slots. A little too good in some cases, in my opinion, but we'll see. More recipes. With the empowering recipes having the option to use any, um, any ingredient plus a number of souls. And it gets a plus one for each soul spent. So, if you have some souls that you're not going to use, or you're in dungeon mode where you kind of just crank souls out of enemies, you can uh, plus one to anything. Like, I'm dying. I need health. Let me chuck a dried root and spend like uh, three souls, and that's a plus three, so six health. That's very nice. You have uh, the Estus Flask. Yeah, I know. Successful potions remove one black cube and one red cube from the endurance bar. That's every time you make a potion with this vial equipped, you heal. That's really good. Also might be overpowered. I might work on it. Don't know. Exploding Urn. I like this one. Very simple. Gets to the point. I don't think it needs to be adjusted. Potion effects always have AoE. 
and destructive potions deal plus one. That's pretty good. But uh, another thing I should bring up in terms of functionality for the alchemist is you may notice instead of upgrade slots, there's just more slots. Essentially that you can equip multiple recipes and multiple vials. And you can swap them out at the start of your turn, similar to how you swap out a weapon. You'd be like, hmm, I don't need Estus Flask. Let me swap to Divine Vial. <laughs> you know. So, yeah, I think I've pretty much explained how the Alchemist works in its entirety. Yeah, okay, so. Let me go over the Magician. This is my bread and butter. The Magician, I had a very fun time working on. <clears throat> the, uh, the Alchemist took forever, drained a lot of my energy. The Magician didn't take all that long and is a fun thing because I've had the idea for the Magician for a while. Not as long as the Alchemist, but a pretty good amount of time. <clears throat> so how the Magician works is... You put your cubes off to the side somewhere. I'll just stick them right here. Whatever. <clears throat> Let me get them over. <clears throat> you have... The Magician has trick cards. Oh, I forgot the uh, the alchemist <laughs> heroic ability. My bad. So it's exactly what it says. You mix three ingredients. It ignores the vials effects and inherits all the selected effects of each of these ingredients. <clears throat> That's all of them. So if the potion has destructive and aiding effects, it will do all of them. Back to the magician. Magician has trick cards instead of weapon cards. You place them in these three slots and then your armor in the armor slot. And they just they just work so much differently than the other classes. And that's the did my audio just like lag for a second there? It looked like my audio just was stalling right there. Don't fucking do that. Was it you? Was my antivirus? Fuck you, antivirus. Get out of here. All right, anyway, where was I? Yes, magician. So their armor's pretty straightforward. You get a black, a black, and a dodge. It's shit. It's bad. It's supposed to be bad. But your tricks... You have active and your inactive tricks. <clears throat> so, you have a trick equipped in your active slot. In this case, I have escape cage. It costs one stamina. If there is more than one enemy in your node, move up to two nodes away. Essentially, it just lets you get out of a gank. Let's say I use that. And I get away from them. Or to get rid of the guy. Oh well. Also, uh, the, the rest of the magician's cards you just put somewhere off to the side near your board. Wherever you want. You can stick them on the top, the side, doesn't matter. <laughs> Face down, preferably. You don't put them in the treasure deck. They have the, uh, the different magic trick types. Conjuration, Alteration, Illusion, and Manipulation. You may recognize a couple of these symbols, depending on what games you've played. But use this. Turn ends, enemy goes. My next activation, you need to swap your trick, because you cannot use the same trick twice in a row. Swap it for... Uh, 
sword box. And then, you know, start my turn and lose that stamina. And for three stamina, you roll six black dice. If half of them roll damage, inflict damage equal, physical damage, sorry, equal to the amount shown on three of those dice. Defense still applies. So, essentially what that means is you take six of these, you roll them. And you can see at least half of them have rolled damage. So then I take three of them, and that's four damage. Now, this sounds pretty powerful, but it uses... Keep in mind, it does use three stamina, and has a chance of doing nothing. Let me roll it again. See if I get lucky enough to... Uh, no, that's perfect luck. That's all... So... You know, black dice, you can't trust them. They're doing real good right now for some reason, though. Even though every time I play the game and try to get them, they uh, they screw me over without fail. Am I missing one? Oh, yeah, I am. Bruh. This is crazy. This is a. Uh, I've never. <laughs> I've never had such amazing luck in my life. Bruh. This is actually really hard. Come on. I'm trying to demonstrate something here. Wow, this is. This is so improbable. What the fuck? What is happening? I, uh, uh, okay. Say your roll actually hold on a second yeah, that's not right huh say you roll something like this does no damage I might actually adjust it to five dice and make the requirement three of them but yeah that's what we got right now so, uh, yeah. Then, uh, I got unlucky. Let me flip my luck token. Reroll. Oh, sure, I woke up really early today. Um, my next turn. Swap this out with coin toss. It costs one stamina. You flip a coin and call it. If called correctly, reset your luck token. So, you just get, like, a coin. Just have a coin. Get a quarter. Hold on. If you call correctly, uh, hold on, let me actually, you could, uh, hold on, heads, it's tails, that's really, like, detailed, by the way, so tail, they called it wrong, so nothing happens, now, the real kicker with the Magician is when you start unlocking tricks. Because you're going to get tired of the same three tricks over and over again. So, you level up your different stats similar to any other class. Except this one starts at nothing and goes to level 1, 2, 3, 4 in the different trick types. With uh, no matter what game mode you're playing, if it's a uh, standard or... Uh, campaign rules the level up still applies 2, 4, 8, 16 so let's say I sp and you can see it shows you the names of the tricks you unlock so 
let's say I go flock of birds. So it's conjuration one, so there it is, flock of birds. You can only have three tricks equipped. So let me swap out a uh, escape cage. So flock of birds, you place a flock of birds token one node away and on the enemy's activation, it just moves one node away from the enemy and it draws the attention and dies in one hit. Essentially, you use it to draw enemies away from you. You just place this. It's a double-sided token. Uh, let me just grab the different cards. Showcase them. Uh, you got a bunch of flowers. We roll the affliction die. The affliction die is uh still in the bag, actually. Oh, and there's your mirror magician. So the affliction die, you just roll it. And it gives you a status effect, poison. And you apply it to enemy in range. And we disconnect it again. Great. You know, it's funny because my internet doesn't have problems on the weekends. Or any of the days I'm not streaming and then uh, yesterday I start streaming without the camera on and it works fine mostly it has some slight issues at some points but otherwise it works fine after stream internet problems uh, today got the camera on streaming internet problems keep shitting out What the fuck? Who is like... Who from my internet company is watching when I'm going live? And they're just like, oh, he's live. Makes internet shit. Yeah, the uh, tabletop simulator just had a loading issue. Oh my god. Yeah, I just should have disconnected from my internet. Fuck's sake. I just got the reconnection successful message. What the fuck? Why the fuck is my internet bad only when I decide to stream? Some bullshit. How long can I go trying to do this? Explain any of this shit before it just disconnects? <clears throat> Uh. So, yeah. You spend souls to level up your different stats. And you get different tricks for each of them. Yes, that is Ricardo, you see. Each uh, thing has their own special focus, hence the different types of tricks. Conjuration focuses on creating things. Alteration focuses on changing things. Illusion is fooling your opponents primarily, and manipulation is like manipulating things. Like Conjuration, you got Flock of Birds. You summon a Flock of Birds. 
Alteration, you got uh, Tile Shift, where you move tiles around. That's what it does. You may think, wow, that is a pointless ability, but it can be quite helpful. Say, um... The uh, a required path to the boss is really difficult. You can just rotate it out. Also helpful for dungeon mode. Monsters apparition. All enemies in range with one defense or less will spend their next activation moving one node away from you. Good way to get enemies to back off. And then volunteer, let an ally take your activation. Uh, that's weird. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. It's a weird thing in the the chat. Okay, so the next kicker for the magician, they're heroic. I'm not going to go over all of the trick cards I'll demonstrate when I am play testing, uh, you know, at some point. But uh, the heroic is Curtain Call. This was the first concept I devised when I came up with the magician class, was this ability. Once per spark, the Magician may use their Estus Flask to recover their Endurance Bar. Then, they deal 9 damage to themselves and unleash a magic attack with infinite range. The power of the attack is equal to the amount of cubes they recovered plus the 9 they just put on. This attack cannot be modified and resistance still applies. So, it's a last resort, essentially. So... You don't have to have your Estus Flask to use it. It will just be less efficient. Say you have your Estus Flask. Let me just grab it for the sake of demonstration. Let me do the maximum potential. Let's say I'm on the brink of death. I use my Heroic. I use my Estus. I heal that damage and I put it back on. And that's 18 damage. Because you do 9 damage to yourself, and the attack is the amount of cubes you recovered plus the 9 you just put on. So the maximum damage potential for this attack is 18. That's a lot of fucking damage. The kicker is, now you are just about dead and you can't heal. <clears throat> so, it is really a last resort, only really to be used to finish the job. So, let me get you out of there. So, that's the two new classes, Alchemist and Magician, in a nutshell. Let me grab. Well, these, not those. Jester Thomas. Both versions. <clears throat> so, Steamforge didn't add Jester Thomas as a phantom or an invader. So I took it upon myself. To do that. To make Jester Thomas as a phantom and an invader. And here he is. So they work identically pretty much to the uh, other phantoms. PNG cutouts, by the way. Don't have 3D models. <clears throat> So you summon a phantom, you get invaded by an invader, 
you have phantom help you invader tries to kill you they have behavior what just happened I don't know that's weird So, Jester Thomas, blah, blah, blah. Uh, also, why did I just shuffle that? I'm an idiot. Hold on. And it doesn't matter. 12 behavior cards, but only a size 4 deck. So, you have a lot of variety when getting invaded by Jester Thomas. Which was the point, because dungeon mode, uh, if you're playing the, uh, the challenge dungeon you will have a higher chance of being invaded by Thomas anyway. <clears throat> they work the same, you know. They have their own ability. They have their own stuff. Just Thomas. Oh, shit. Yawning, man. Uh, whenever Just Thomas is not targeted by an enemy action, he performs this behavior. You move. You get to move him. He's got good dodge. Let me just do a sample flip. Great combustion. Alright. Taunt. Yep. Fireball. And fire orb. Not too crazy. But the invader. Flash sweat. Immediately. Okay. Yeah. So. They move one away from the nearest. And they gain plus three resist. Until next activation. Not something you want to see. <laughs> Fireball, Forbidden Sun, and Taunt. Which, uh, you know, it's just... Or, uh... I'm sorry. Very good. But if he's not... If he's hit with a AoE... No one else in his note takes damage, which is not good if he's with a bunch of enemies. Other fun behavior cards include Great Combustion, Fire Orb, Warmth. This is where Warmth comes into play. Where you place this little token somewhere, and every time someone steps into it, they heal three. Great Fireball, Chaos Storm. That's an oof. Flame Swath, Swath, I don't know. Great Cast Fireball and Fire Tempest, also oof. If you kill them, you get Power Within. <laughs> Why do you get Power Within from Jester Thomas? Because I wanted it. <laughs> I, I wanted Power Within, okay? I was like, that might be a cool card idea. Where it's a plus one to attacks for every die used. One damage to self for every die used. Overwrites all other enhancements. So, let me try and paint a scenario here. You have a big chonker of an attack. I'm talking like five, four dice or something. Your attack is plus one for every die you use, but you do damage to yourself for every die you use. So, you hit harder to your foes and yourself. The, the old trade-off thing. So, yeah. Don't have much else to explain there. And, uh... Fuck, dude. I have a... 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 I Okay. And new with this... Um... Uh, thing, this update, is the Phantom Gifts. Why are they upside down? Which is a mechanic I decided to come up with when I thought to myself one day, Man, I'm sick of my friends dying. So, let me f force them to give me a present in exchange for their life. So, if you have a phantom and they survive a boss encounter then you get a phantom gift based on who you protected. Let me just grab a, a cast a light. I know, I added a cast a light to the fucking board game. Woo. But it's actually pretty good this time. 
You have Llewellyn Shield, which works like a one hand, this two hander. Master's Glove is an interesting one that I I thought, what's the craziest thing I can do with these cards? And that is uh, Pseudo Stand the Master. Summon Sword Master Saber one note away and activate a random behavior card, then remove him from the tile. It's like um, those 2D fighting games, like uh, like Fighter Z and that sort of thing. Or you press a button to have an ally come in and do an attack and then they just leave. It's like that. That's the premise behind it. The Moaning Shield, where you can just take the aggro whenever you want. The Storm Ruler, which I wanted to use the hold mechanic more. If you know what the hold mechanic is, I introduced it with like like one or two cards ever. I think only one being the uh, the, the old moonlight thing that Medea drops. I wanted to use it more and Storm Ruler is cool. Armor of the Sun. Or you gain a Sunlight Medal after defeating a boss for every player in your party. More on that later. Beatrice's Catalyst, which is an absolute monster of a staff. I mean, look at it. Look, just look at it. Look at it. That's crazy. Gray Shields of Glory. It's just wall. Wall. Lucio's Mask is an armor upgrade. Gives you an extra dodge. Soundless Talisman is very nice. Very good for buffing and healing. And then Warmth. Get your own Warmth for Jester Thomas surviving, which you place it on a node, and every time someone steps in it, they heal two health. It's one less than Jester Thomas's, but that's kind of the point, because it's overpowered. And it stays there, you know? It's, it fucking stays. It's free healing infinitely. Although, uh, you know, everyone who steps into it will heal, not just players. So you got to be wary of that. And then the Sunlight Medal, which you get a Sunlight Medal for every player. So if you have a party of four, that's four Sunlight Medals. And you can discard it for one of the following effects. Summon a Phantom, even when not Embered. Add Elemental to anyone's attack or remove Elemental from anyone's attack. Very handy stuff. So that's Phantom Gifts and Jester Thomas. Uh, what the fuck else did I add in this update? Uh, yes, okay, Pinwheel. Yes, I added Pinwheel. Due to popular and uh, no one asked for it demand, uh, I added Pinwheel as a mini boss because I already had everything for Pinwheel for the summoner. But I thought... Since I have everything, I could just convert it to a mini boss with little to no problem. And here he is. Huh. <laughs> I give to you Pinwheel. Yeah, it's Pinwheel. So Pinwheel is the weakest mini boss in the entire game. Just like the get the actual game, he sucks. He's terrible. But, his clones change it up. Because uh, he's got like these crazy abilities and his clones really make it hard for you. He can summon up to four clones at once. And they replicate his moves, which is not good for you. His, uh, that was an accident. Uh, his loot includes the Rite of Kindling, which you just get an extra Essence Flask. Like, it's to uh, counteract the Hunters. The main reason I made this was for Dungeon Mode, to counteract the Hunters' rune that allows them to have an extra Blood Vial. And... Uh, you know, to kind of make it a bit fair, because dungeon mode is PvP. Like, there's PvP by default. 
and the hunter just has an edge over everyone because of their ability to just have two flasks essentially so this is a way for you to get an extra flask also outside of dungeon mode as well it's just cool the hunter cannot use it because it has dark soul stat requirements and then you shuffle these three and you draw one and you get one of the masks that we oh so dearly love in this case mask of the mother you can place a cube here instead of on your endurance bar. It's uh, it's like the life ring or is it the tiny beings ring? Whatever it's called from the uh, Iron Keep or Dark Root, one of those expansions. It's like that, essentially. Uh, you have the Mask of the Child, which works like a Corinthy ring. And the Mask of the Father, which plus one to dodge and counteracts equipment that prevents you from dodging. What that means is uh, the heavy stuff that doesn't let you dodge normally, like Havels. You can now dodge in those. But Pima otherwise works the same as uh, the other mini bosses. But we have our new contender to the update. I kept him secret for quite a while until the update came out. Mega Jester Thomas. It's a mega boss that's a giant Jester Thomas. And I came up with this idea like a while back and I just thought to myself, man, I have the brain of a fucking eight year old to come up with this shit. So Mega Jester Thomas is just an absolute troll of a boss. First of all, uh, no 3D model, but I made something of it with the uh, <clears throat> the uh, the Darkest Dungeon mod for Jester Thomas. I just used that because it's cool and dungeon mode. Ha ha ha! Wink wink. Uh, I found out i can link the uh the boss base i use for all of the models i import with a cutout so you can differentiate the arcs which is something you could not do with some of the other bosses you kind of just had to guess but uh you know it's cool i like it i wish i had a 3d model but so let me just grab this board for reference Oh, where's your damn board? There it is. So his board is the table. It all comes full circle. So he spawns here. You spawn, you know, on this side or whatever. And as soon as the fight starts, let me just grab these boys. As soon as the fight starts, you spawn in a phantom right here. Whether you like it or not, whether you're embered or not, phantom right there. <laughs> and how this is going to work is... Need a, 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 You got the behavior cards. You got the heat up card. And you got the summoning cards. And you got the mega storm card. Take the behaviors, you know. He has five. There's 12. You just take five. Oh, thank God he doesn't have mega flash sweat. <clears throat> so he kind of just works like a mega boss you flip a behavior mega fire orb so he's say he just moves away and he just <laughs> but then the phantom's gonna fight him and it's not gonna hit him because it's out of range and also uh he is not targeted by action so he's gonna move here 
and the boss is going to behave. It's going to go one and then mega combustion. Boom, right here, mega combustion. Not targeted. Move closer. <clears throat> Great combustion. Move and then attack. We'll move them like, uh, I don't know, we'll just move them right here and then attack them point blank. Any damage the Phantom does to the boss is instead recovered in health. Let's say uh, he's like right here at 40. 40 health, right? Two blue dice. That's the roller. I don't need the roller. I just need the actual. You're fucking kidding me. Today is a strange day. Bam! Five. Five damage. Uh, guess what? First of all, you calculate uh, resistance, whatnot. So, three. Heals three. So, yeah. That's going to be a thing. And he can kill the phantom. And if he does kill the phantom, then you add this card to his behavior deck the summon phantom where he just summons another one <clears throat> so he just brings it back right there <clears throat> and there's actually uh there actually is a rule about how many you can have right here you can summon up to two phantoms and two invaders so you can end up with two of these guys if he just keeps using that. And they'll keep healing him. And there's nothing you can do about it. You're fucked. <laughs> and when he gets to... So that's just in his deck permanently. So his behavior deck is already grown to 6 from 5. Then on heat up... You add his heat up card. And the summon dark spirit card. So now he's got eight cards. <laughs> this one's me. Oh, hell yeah. All other Jester Thomases are immune to damage until the next enemy activation. That's brutal. Summon Dark Spirit. Ooh. That's brutal. So then he's just going to summon a fucking invader, Thomas, right there. And the potential exists where this is the position you're in. <laughs> where you just have these phantoms running around, healing him unintentionally. These invaders coming towards you, trying to kill you. Or they'll fight each other. They don't, the invaders don't heal off the phantoms, only the boss does. They'll just kill each other and allow him to summon more. <laughs> and it's just a mess. And I love it. It's chaos. Pure chaos. And what you don't want to see is his heat up card, which is the last one, center stage. So let's say he's like over here, like this. Center stage. He's going to spend this turn turning this way. And every turn, every uh, activation, he's going to move one space towards the center until he gets to the center. And then you're going to flip the Mega Storm card. And he's going to hit all of those nodes. Pretty much every single node except for these two, these two, these two, and these two. With a whopping fucking nine elemental damage. So you have all, depending how far away he is, you have all that time to get to safety. Dodging it is not an option. It's dodge difficulty of four. Four. That is very difficult to achieve in the core game. That's difficult to achieve with the expansions. 
the only ones who are reasonably able to acquire it are, well, anyone technically, but the ones who are more likely than others are the assassin and the thief. And then you put, uh, you know, custom expansions into account. The hunter is p capable of doing that. And uh, if you get Lucatil's mask, you're capable of doing that. Also, the uh, mask of the father from Pinwheel. I've added a few new options to be able to boost your dodge ability to make dodge more viable. One of my goals of this board game is to make dodge more viable because it sucks. So you kill the boss. Uh, that's the wrong bag. Uh, there it is. You kill the boss. You get his treasure. Which is immolation. All enemies in range take one damage. When they do, receive one damage for every point of damage dealt. Last for entire activation. So, that may sound underwhelming especially with zero range but here's how it's meant to be used use immolation then move at the enemies it doesn't say uh it, it, it should have says they take one damage you don't roll for anything you don't you listen to any sort of resistance they just take one damage period you can kill enemies with this card very easily. But for every enemy you do damage to, you take damage. And it costs one stamina to use, so that's already one. If you kill one enemy, that's already two. Uh, you know, you move once, so the potential is you use it, uh, you kill an enemy on your node, you move, you kill another enemy, you spend one stamina to move again, you kill another enemy, that's already half your health gone. Uh, one second. Okay, so yeah, Immolation. <clears throat> and then, Lingering Flame. <clears throat> um, I believe... Yeah, he has Mega Lingering Flame, which works the same. So, for 3 stamina, you just place a Lingering Flame token. It works like traps. You just take this. Uh, you can shuffle it up. You place one. Someone steps on that node. Flip it. 3 damage. Dodge difficulty 2. It's like a trap. If they don't dodge it, 3 damage. It's elemental damage. Uh, <clears throat> it doesn't exactly matter... That I listed it as elemental damage. But I did it specifically in case, for instance, say, someone was playing with some kind of house rule involving traps. I'm sure someone out there does. By default, you cannot tank traps. You have to dodge or take the full damage. I'm sure someone has played with house rules involving some kind of role. That's why it's there. 
That's why I have elemental listed as the attack type. <clears throat> but yeah, so... Why are there two Book of Customs? Huh? That's, uh... Odd. <clears throat> they also have uh, special rules for if the player uses Calamity and Corrosion because there's no rules explained how they work if you were to use them because the only ones who have those in the uh, you know the base game are Calamite and Gaping Dragon. So it's important to list off what they do if the player inflicts it on someone. So you got that stuff. Custom bosses. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Dungeon mode. This has been a long time coming. Technically, I added dungeon mode in the last update, but it was incomplete. Uh, I rushed out the idea because I was trying to get the update out quickly for some reason. I don't remember what. And uh, it ended up me half-assing it and not having the full rule set and concept of it done. Now I can say it is in fact done. So, dungeon mode is uh, essentially an entire overhaul of the game. You play it differently. I know, people have made stuff like this before. You have, uh, in here, you have the Hollowed Edition by Santuric. You have, uh, there's other ones in here too. There's Rekindled, there's Vondisol. Uh, you have all these different overhauls, different rule sets people make. Dungeon mode doesn't, uh, I didn't just seek to change a large portion of the, how the game works. I s sought to essentially add a whole new flavor to the game that already exists. Which I'm sure you could say the same about all the other rule sets people make. It's different, okay? Cut me some slack. Let me demonstrate. So dungeon mode, you get your tiles, uh, I'll just use, um, I'll just use default tiles, I'll just get a bonfire, let me do a, uh, Let me do a, uh, 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 I think it's a five by five cell. Hold on, I have a, the dungeon master is a challenge, challenge. I have challenges in this book you can do if you want. They're challenging. The dungeon master uses dungeon mode and the, the lore of Dark Souls custom. Yeah, five by five grid is the standard you don't have to build a dungeon like this. This is just the uh, basic. So essentially, you uh, you pick a boss, mini boss first. I'll pick. Uh, get rid of that. I'll just stick it right there. And lock it. Uh, let me dick you can uh yeah so what I'm doing essentially is just gathering 
map tiles because you're going to need a decent amount of map tiles if you want a real nice dungeon mode experience. Let me just shuffle that bag up. So you have the boss right here in the middle. You want a puzzle piece tiles around it. You can set up however you want. This is just an example. I'm just doing this style, which is in the challenge mode. You can set up however you want, just like the normal board game. You can make it like a long path. You can make it do these winds, twists, and turns. You can make it true roguelike, where you, uh, well, actually, that's how you're supposed to do it, technically, is, uh, Hold on, let me, let me, let me demonstrate in a better method. Let me put these all back in. <clears throat> you will probably want to use tiles to line things up, though. If you want it to be nice and neat, that is. I am a perfectionist, so, yeah. Let me just click it together. Hey. They they you know they click together very nicely because of the grid system. So let's say I just want a, a small dungeon. I'll do this. Lock it, put these back. <clears throat> Wait. I'll do demonstration of a two player test so I can test PvP. Place a second bonfire tile. There. <clears throat> Just an example. If you have more players, you can place more bonfire tiles wherever. You can have people start on the same tile if you want. Just an example. I designed dungeon mode to be pretty loose. So that you can uh, change the rules however you see fit. So let me go back. No, oh shit. There's a long list of rules here about how it works, how shit is set up, what you do, you know, whatever. But uh, a lot of the experience is homebrewing it, like doing things unique the way you want to do it. The essential core things for dungeon mode are here. Uh, you get this red box. <laughs> red box. You get the merchant board. The merchant thingamajig. The patron tokens. And the bonfire encounters. Set these wherever you want. I'll just stick them right here. And essentially, what you want to do is... Let me just grab... Uh, let me let me pick our mini boss. I I pick Pinwheel. And I'll use Pinwheel's uh, encounter difficulty as a reference. You can come up with whatever you want, but for the sake of this uh this play test, this demo, I will do level one and two encounters since it's Pinwheel. That makes sense. It's a mini boss. So, you can do some calculating, or you can just throw as many as you want. There will be approximately, if I do a complete square, there will be approximately 22 encounters. So what I could do is throw out one of these, throw out one of these, I have 22. And I could throw out, uh, let me make sure these are shuffled. But another one of each, and then I could incorporate 
the level 1 bonfire encounter and the level 2 bonfire encounter. Go ahead and get these out of the way. Get that out of here. And we have our encounter cards. No, bad. We'll say outer layer uh yeah outer layer is level one inner layer is level two we'll go with that so then uh we'll need to pick classes for the sake of this demonstration i will use alchemist and magician Uh, probably not the best candidates for testing a uh, play test by myself, but you know. So we'll go ahead and put the alchemist over here. And the magician over here. Set them up. Right away, there's the difference between the, the character setups, which kind of the purpose. There we are. <coughs> and you'll grab your treasure. And the treasure deck goes right here on the merchant board. Go ahead and add the alchemist ingredients. And add the alchemist treasure. And now we are ready to begin after I set the magician's cards right here. Good. So, you start the game. So dungeon mode works similarly to the base game where you walk along tiles, get to the boss, but there's the option of additional exploration. Right now I'm playing with like a sort of like restricted like square pattern dungeon. Whereas if you wanted to, you can go like unlimited and just kind of go all over this table. Entirely up to you. But it all starts with... Uh, you know, you can also use whatever homebrew rules that you want to, such as uh, stuff involving turn order, uh, just whatever, whatever works. If you can make it work with dungeon mode, do it, try it. So let's say uh, Alchemist goes first. Let's do standard sort of thing. Uh, I'm just going to do player turn, then enemy turn. Like, players being enemies. 
Uh, it doesn't really matter though. You can do, you know, I'll just do the standard rule set player, enemy player. We'll try that. So Arkhamus goes, let's go to the right. I uh, got this room, align the doorways. Level one, unlighted chamber. This looks like a pretty bad room already. <clears throat> At least to start in. <clears throat> also another thing, set up any sort of thing you want in terms of mimics and invaders the same way you would uh you know standard play like for the mimic, uh, you could like every time you encounter a new tile, I could just copy paste this deck, maybe shuffle, draw a card, apply it to that tile, and then there's a chance it's a mimic. You could do the same thing with invaders once you're, uh, you know, once you're embered. So, <clears throat> you walk right into this room. <laughs> and uh, how this works is you spent a move action entering the room. Then the room would kind of just play out normally where the enemies go. But if you wanted to, you could say, oh, well, I moved, so it's still my turn. I could spend stamina to move additional nodes, or I can attack. So let me draw. I'll do dark manifest. Combustum pedal. It's three elemental blacks. Watch you get blanks on all three. That's a perfect roll. So then I, I kill the silver knight. <laughs> you can put the cards off to the side somewhere if you want. Just. You know, the only one you really need to keep is the the uh, encounter card <clears throat> to uh, respawn the encounter in case you know shit happens. Now let's say I end that turn, and the enemies are gonna go. They're gonna do their normal thing. He's gonna go here. This guy's gonna stay right there because he's as far away as he can be from me, and he's gonna shoot the alchemist. Alchemist has a black elemental. Oof. But two dodge dice. You know, I'm feeling risky. Nice. So I dodge. I'll go ahead and dodge him like... Uh, right here. No, you know what? Uh, I will actually use the uh, player, player, enemy turn order because uh, the normal rule set might lead to problems with uh, your enemies just whopping your ass. So let's say the alchemist went before all those enemies went. Let's uh, have the magician go. Grab a map tie. Oh, I oh wow. Well. Let's stick with that. Walks into a room and it's Forsaken Depths. Got one of these. OK, 
Okay, we got a bunch of hollows. Whoa, lag spike. So, Magician moves into the room. Uh, we'll just say I had uh, this. Nah. I don't know what I want. Let's, uh. We'll just, like, end the Magician's turn there. Then the enemies over there would move, and the enemies over here would move. Which, uh, this dude would walk in and. Ah! Magician's not so good at dodging, so, and he's not good at blocking either, but we'll we'll roll for the block. So he takes a little chunk of damage. This guy's gonna move here. This guy is gonna stay there and shoot. There's a one black and elemental as well. That's barely a roll, but whatever. This one's gonna move here and shoot. And do full damage, apparently. Ouch. Oh yeah, I forgot to uh, mention. You can just go ahead and give everyone a like their own soul counter if you want. Like you know, every time you kill an enemy, it's like every time you kill an enemy, not when you clear a room. When you kill an enemy, you get souls equal to the amount they have in health. Since the alchemist killed a silver knight, they have one health, one soul. And enemies did their thing. Now back to player's turn. So, alchemist has the potential to move to the next room. I'm feeling like crazy. My body's tired. <laughs> but the mind is strong. So, if I wanted to, I could run up out of this room, but the enemies would still follow me until you're two tiles away from them. So, Alchemist, turn, can't draw. Regain stamina. Whoa. So, uh, those chests in this room, chests are very valuable, especially in dungeon mode. You know why? Because you do not have a shop you can access after every tile like in the base game you can only buy things from the merchant and you have to find the merchant on a bonfire tile that is not the starting ones so a chest is two free items so i mean yeah, so we're going to go for that. The alchemist is going to move here. He's in range of that hollow. To which we're going to dark manifest uh, combustion pedal. Which was uh, three blacks. Done. Dead. 
So another Sulfur Alchemist. Back to the Magician. Magician is not in a good spot. They're getting their ass kicked. <clears throat> I think we'll swap to Escape Cage. Uh, actually, no, we can't because there's only one enemy on our node. Not good. <clears throat> not going to lie, that's not good. So, we'll swap to Sword Box. A risky play, I know. But, beats dying. And three stamina to do the thing. That was so goddamn lucky when I was demonstrating, and I swear if it rolls all blanks this time. Yeah, so he's dead. So kill him. Magician gets a soul. And then uh, I'm just going to Estus. And the Magician has not moved yet. So I think we're going to go ahead and move him right here. And then end the turn. And the enemy, this archer, is going to stay there and shoot the alchemist. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try to dodge that again. Who's on ballsy? Not too bright, but ballsy. That's full damage. Ouch. And over here on the magician's tile. So you're going to go here. This guy is going to go... Uh... Doesn't really matter, they're all the same distance. I'll move them here just because it looks better. And then they're gonna shoot. So that's one. Roll again. That's one again. Back to the player's turn. Yeah, you kind of got to reshuffle this every single time. It's a little annoying. Like I said, adjustments may be needed. This is a test, after all. I'm play testing. <clears throat> also, in dungeon mode, I should maybe put this in the rule book uh, you don't have to clear a room to open a chest you can just open it although be wary if there's a mimic in the chest you'll have to deal with the mimic and the enemies left in the room so uh, Let me just move the alchemist here. We'll take care of this uh, crossbow hollow. Just so uh, they're out of the way. So let's go ahead and... You know something? I just noticed the... Uh... The alchemist doesn't use stamina. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's an oversight or if uh, past me is just a fucking moron. So, yeah. That's kind of a problem. I mean, it's been... Uh, hmm. I don't know. More testing will be needed. So let's take care of that guy. We'll use a dark manifest and a combustum. 
I feel like Dark Manifest is being relied on too heavily. Dead. That's another soul. And you can kind of perform a, I'd say you can perform a free action to uh, open a chest. Like, because you know, when you, when you play the game, oh, you have move, attack, or attack move but there's no action for opening chests because you automatically open them after the end of the room so I'm thinking if I should like if a uh, you know it's uh, like I said it's entirely up to preference that's why it's not in the rule book if you open chests for free whenever you want if you're next to them or if you have to spend an action to open them. I don't know. I'll say for this demonstration, I will use an action to open it. So I'll leave that there. And then back to the magician here. We'll step forward here. And uh, actually we won't. Uh, I forgot I just used sword box, so I can't use it again. And we're in a bad spot. So, uh, I'll just, man, <laughs> this shit suck. Move here and spend an activation to open the chest, which is a chest. Uh, if I could find like an open chest model, maybe I should just use that because when you open a chest, you kind of just have to, or at least I do, I just have to get rid of it and swap to the open chest token from the core game. All right, interesting. So the magician got the fire link armor and the scimitar. They can't use either of those things, but they can sell them. What makes the magician a bit weird in dungeon mode is the shop is almost useless for them in the fact that they don't buy any of the cards they can use or want to use. So instead, you can buy more than just uh, treasure cards from the shop. You can buy treasure cards, but you can also, uh, it's the, in dungeon mode, it's the only way to refill your luck token that, uh, you know, otherwise some other way of doing it. But in the base game, you can buy your luck token back for a soul. In dungeon mode, you can only buy it back for a soul at the merchant. You can replenish your heroic for three souls, replenish your S's for five, or buy an ember for seven. So the shop will be useful for the magician in that regard. So this guy's gonna move here. Both gonna be up in that corner and they're both gonna shoot. They're gonna keep shooting. Two, that's one damage. Hmm. -hmm. So 
So, Alchemist, free to move. Let's use an action to open that chest. It's a mimic. <laughs> uh, so that's, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Draw a mimic, activate the mimic. So now the alchemist is in just a precarious spot as the magician in that there is a mimic on their dial. Mimics being not so good. <clears throat> also, I should note that... Uh, I should probably put it in the rule book. Uh, I should note that killing a mimic uh, behaves similarly to how killing a mimic works in the base game, which is I don't believe you get any souls, but you get two chests worth of items. So no, you can't power up and grind mimics. So these are action, but now they can move. So let's move them away from the mimic. Back to you. Let's move them here after the fuck. Oh, I also forgot to. Yeah, if I can swap to the sword box again. And uh, just do it. That looks good to me. So he's dead. Now their soul. And then Mimic goes. Oh. He's going to move right towards the, us and just do his thing. But. Uh. We are pretty good at dodging, kinda, I think. So let's dodge him. All right. We did dodge him, though. That's... I'm bad. And these guys are gonna shoot the magician. And back to the player's turns. So, I could just sit here and demonstrate how to fight a mimic, but uh, everyone knows how to fight a mimic. So instead I'm going to demonstrate running away. I'm just gonna go here, get rid of that. I say get rid of that. Uh, if you wanna get rid of that. <laughs> Spend his stamina to move again. 
off the tile to load a new one. And, uh, oh, that's a layer two, actually. <laughs> that was the uh, agreement I came up with. Ooh. So, now that, uh, let's, let's uh, go ahead and move the alchemist, just, uh, I mean, magician. Let's move the magician, so if we can progress the, you know, activation order. So, magician, we'll just, uh... Swap it out for, I don't know, escape cage. And uh, Magician is probably going to die, but whatever. So, actually, uh, yeah, no, they're probably just going to die. <laughs> Unless, hold on. What I'll do instead with the magician is I'll move here and spend one stamina to go back to the bonfire starting tile and rest. Which resting does the normal thing where it heals you, replenishes your tokens, and it respawns the enemies. Chests do not come back, neither do mimics and the sword. So adjacent tiles to the one with the bonfire are replenished. They come back. So, man, there's still a lot of things I didn't put in the rule book because I kind of left it open for interpretation also. Uh, just didn't run through my head at the time because you got to play test to really uh, kick out the cranks. So enemies cannot chase you or attack you in the starting bonfire tile. Neither can you attack anyone from the starting tile either. So there, right there, there he is. And what we'll do is, I think, spend two souls to get a new trick. Well, uh... Hmm... How many attacking tricks we can get right now I mean that will help us do damage I mean the uh, magician's main purpose isn't to do damage as much as it is just to really mess up the game in a weird way uh, I'll go ahead and get flock of birds and I'll swap out uh, 
escape cage for it. And then it's the enemy's turn. The mimic will go stomping kick. Move right here, do their thing. So the mimic will continue to pursue the alchemist on this tile. Unless the alchemist goes on another tile away, and if the mimic stays on this one, the mimic will stop following them. But they have to get two tiles away from the mimic, otherwise it will keep chasing them. So mimic went. Uh, Silver Knights, uh, they're assholes. We all hate them. They do their thing. This guy comes along. And these guys kind of sit around because Magician's not there. So, back to the player's turns. The Alchemist will, uh... Well, that's a terrifying sight to behold, and I don't want to risk two Mimics coming after me, so... Yeah. There, forgot to get rid of that, but we'll keep it there anyway. To move here. We'll spend another one to. Why am I going deeper? This is bad. <laughs> this is not good. Whoops. Temple of the Deeps. I was wondering what that was supposed to mean. Temple of the Deeps. Deep, deeps? Deeps what? Hey, ah! Can you fucking... What is happening? Oh, I don't need to do the mimic thing there because it's not just... But I did forget to do it here. So now the alchemist has made it to this tile, the mimic will stop pursuing, but these enemies will continue to pursue. So yeah, this is pretty much the uh, how it works in terms of exploration and you know enemies doing their thing. There's uh, things you can adjust accordingly if you want. It's a very flexible game mode. You can do your own changes, your own special rules. Just whatever works. Man, I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, I know why my body's tired because I woke up way too early this morning and I've been up all day. But like, holy shit, dude. Like, get a fucking load of yourself. Get a load of yourself. Very tired. 
Uh, I woke up early this morning to pre-order the collector's edition of Dark Souls the role-playing game. <laughs> That's why I woke up so early this morning, because uh, it was available for pre-order this morning. And... I hate that because it is way too early and I'm suffering now because of it, but I got the collector's edition. I got shiny book. So, I mean, well, what is it? What are you going to do? I, uh, in a sense, I'm not like super hyped for the book like I am for Elden Ring. But I am excited because uh you know, people have their own opinions about Dark Souls the board game. Some people are like, "Oh, I love this game." Other people are like, "It's a great concept, but the rules should be worked on a bit more. There's some issues. It's grindy, it's tedious, it's repetitive." Blah, 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 all these rules. Uh, let's expand upon some elements. Which, one, thank God that community exists. Because, uh, it, there you have, look, right there, there's a prime example. People who want to make custom elements, like myself. Uh, for me personally, though, I'm not amongst the people who are like, oh, I need to make more stuff for the game because it's lacking. For me, I like the game just the way it is, but I enjoy it so much, I wanted to make my own additions that will add to the experience. Uh, a lot of people work to replace the experience with what they deem as a better one, or they try to mix it up. I try to add on to the experience that already exists because I like the experience that's there. But the way I uh, structure my things allows you to easily use them with other stuff besides how it works normally. But, uh, you know, I love Dark Souls the board game. I... I like Dark Souls the card game as well. That's a great one. That's fantastic. I got it uh, up there. Uh, Dark Souls the card game is great. Um, I thought about making my own expansions for that. But that won't come for a while. Like, in all honesty, not happening for a while. Uh, Bloodborne the board game, though. I will work on an expansion for that soon. Involving the summoner from... Oh. Something came up. <laughs> but, uh. Yeah, an expansion based on the summoner class that I made for Dark Souls Custom. As well as. Uh, if you know anything about Bloodborne the board game, it rocks, by the way. Uh. It uh, has like a story-driven like gameplay loop. You follow a story, you make decisions, it changes the outcome. It's wicked sick. So uh, an expansion I have planned for Bloodborne the board game involves a uh, new class being the Summoner from Dark Souls Custom, uh, probably a new boss, maybe like a couple new enemies, and just a new like campaign a new story because uh you know it's awesome i like uh writing stories i like telling stories uh and bloodborne the board game is a very good uh, opportunity to do that as well as the game is just fucking it's hardcore man it's awesome i love it i still need to get the rest of the expansions I only have two expansions. Uh, I was collecting them all, but then every f fucking game in the universe decided to release at, like, the same time, month after month. I haven't been able to expand my board game 
collection in a hot while because of video game releases and um i've also been getting like uh hardware and stuff uh like physical things to help in certain tasks like streaming here uh you know i got this new chair i got this new microphone um other stuff you know uh video games as well but uh it's starting to slowly die down finally Elden ring comes out in uh shit almost a week down like eight days oh but Elden ring comes out uh horizon uh new dawn or uh is that what it's called horizon 2 forbidden west that's what it's called uh the new horizon uh well i do want to get it and play it uh i don't need to buy it right now because i haven't even finished the first one <laughs> uh so i need to get around to doing that and then i'll get the second one and play it uh maybe on stream maybe not i would rather play it on ps5 because it was probably made for ps5 but i don't fucking have one no one has one uh Tokyo Ghostwire comes out uh, next month. That game I'm excited for. I want to play that. I want to get that. I want to play that. It's fucking awesome looking. It, I just, mm, it looks so sick. I want to play it. Oh yeah, I also, uh, you know, we need to continue Metroid Prime. I know. We'll get to that. We need to continue Yakuza 0. That's coming. That will happen. Just be patient. I took a break from Yakuza 0 to focus on uh, Metroid Prime because I really needed to get it out of the way. And uh, there was uh, Ghost, Ghost of Tsushima as well. Uh, I got the new Pokemon game, Legends Arceus. Uh, I haven't played it yet. I, I want to stream it. It might be a fun experience. Uh, fun to make fun of. <laughs> no, but... uh. It's an experience uh, I've not done yet. I haven't spoiled myself on it too much either. So I don't know uh, a good decent amount of things about the game. I do know things I don't like about it. But that's for another time. But uh, yeah, I'll play that at some point. But... Here's the problem. Elder Ring comes out in like a week. It comes out next Friday. Technically Thursday at 9 p.m. Which is uh, subsequently when my stream ends. Yeah. I thought it was coming out on Thursday. And that would have been hype. Because I could have recorded my first uh, experience of the game on stream. But, uh, you know, I, I can't stream after 9 p.m. because I have things to do. I'm busy or I'm tired. And I just want the energy, you know. So, yeah. So, Elden Ring on stream is going to be a little late. But it will happen. And it's going to gonna take over the schedule yeah Elden Ring is gonna take over the schedule but uh yeah <clears throat> video games are starting to finally slow down and there's less things I need to get so I can maybe focus on finishing my board game collections I need the rest of the expansions for Bloodborne, the board game. I need the expansion for Dark Souls, the card game. I still don't have that. I know. It sucks. I'm a criminal. Uh, 
I don't have the expansion for Fallout. I don't have the expansions for Resident Evil 2. I collect a lot of board games, okay? <laughs> uh, I want to get... Uh, Steamforge is the biggest offender. I'm pissed off at them because they keep releasing games that I want. Uh, Dark Souls the role-playing game is one example. Uh, they got Monster Hunter World, the board game. They got Horizon. They got Resident Evil 2 and 3. They got Devil May Cry. These are all franchises I just love. And the games look sick. And the miniatures look badass. Whoops. But, uh... Dark Souls, the role-playing game. The role-playing role -playing Dark Souls game play. Souls. Dark. Um... <clears throat> I'm excited for that to come out because I want to see what I can do with it. It's supposed to be like uh, D and D, that good shit. But uh, here's the thing: I've never played Dungeons and Dragons. I know uh, about it. I know some rules, how some things work, but I've never actually played it. Uh, so my friends were supposed to play it multiple times, but never did. Got busy, ended up doing other stuff. And, uh... Yeah. Uh, I'm most excited to see what I can do with it, though. Like... Think about it. The only thing holding me back from truly unleashing my psycho chaoticness on this game is my uh, my inability to do certain things with certain programs, such as uh, Photoshop, which is what I make everything in. I'm limited to my artistic skills. I can't draw. I'm not an artist. I have to find images and edit them. You know, uh, my ideas are restricted by what I can find, essentially. I can't 3D sculpt. I can't make my own 3D models, you know. But with Dark Souls, the role playing game, it's a fucking book with words. I can do words. I can do words. No problem. You should see some of the fucking notes I take on some of the the stuff I work on on this. <clears throat> some of them get pretty extensive. <clears throat> yeah, so, uh... Yeah. Man, uh, this would be easier to test actually with another person at least. But uh, if I'm at Lonesome, it's just kind of, you know, just trudging along. Also, the, uh, the lack of energy I have is also an issue. Also, the internet being bad. That's also a problem. So let's say uh, Magician goes over here. You know, I'm gonna rig it a little bit. Here we are. <clears throat> so this is a bonfire encounter. I was pretty stupid putting it next to the, uh, the actual bonfire, but essentially it's just it just says put a bonfire in the middle. You could just use the card if you want. Like if you really care. Or if you want to get extra fashion points. You can just get yourself a bonfire miniature and just stick it there. 
And then you go ahead and take the uh, the merchant token that marks where the merchant is. You could put them anywhere on this tile. You just stick them somewhere, anywhere you want. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's the same on both sides. Uh, <clears throat> if you're adjacent to the merchant, you can access his shop. As long as there's no enemies on the tile, they will follow you into this tile. They do not follow you into starting bonfire tiles, but encountered bonfire tiles they will follow you into and you can't access the shop with their enemies when you first encounter him you unravel his treasure deck like this see so you got masses of tire dried root rapier and dung pie for two four six and eight souls wow literal shit for eight souls you're trying to rip me off So the goal of this mechanic <clears throat> is simple. You want to try and buy things for the cheapest you can. And the only way to do that is to buy something or have someone else buy something. And uh, there's a sense of like conflict, like competition, if you will between players uh specifically if they're like base classes like you know anything from the core anything from the characters expansion um you can get competitive because you will fight for things in the merchant's inventory like the rapier for instance it's a black die plus one for zero stamina that's pretty good with a mod slot that's really good <clears throat> and it has a defense too that, that is actually really good <laughs> holy shit um so you see that six souls that's six whole souls that's pricey <clears throat> but if everyone's looking at that rapier you're going to want to get it first and you're either going to have to fork over six souls or risk someone else buying it when it goes cheaper. <clears throat> Let's say you buy Masters of Tire for two souls. You move everything down the track and draw the next one. And that's how the shop works. And you bought the Masters of Tire for two souls so you get two patronage tokens. They're stackable by the way. You're welcome. Yeah, you, you guys uh, think here. He's not targetable for an attack, nor can they in turn attack. They take up space and abides by no limitation rules. The merchant shop cannot be used if there are enemies on the tile or if the player is in combat. Every time a player spends souls in the shop, they get patronage tokens equal to the amount of souls they spent. The player may use these tokens in exchange for items placed souls up to three times for each category if the cost increasing by 10 each time. So. That just means uh, <clears throat> this thing right here, the patronage chart. So I bought Masters of Tire. That is lowered rapier to four. I'll buy that for four. So I'll give four. I get that. I get four patronage tokens. So now I have six patronage tokens. If I get ten, I can get a free item. He's getting moved down the track. <clears throat> so, uh, let's say something useless is on the cheapest slot. And no one wants it. No one wants to fork over the souls. That will, in turn, keep everything else more expensive. Until someone, like, coughs up the souls for the cheapest item. Even if it's shit. Now, an important thing to note with uh, the merchant on dungeon mode, I did not create it uh, with the full like scan of all the custom cards people have made. So, like, 
some cards may not work with the uh, merchant. Like, uh, for instance, <clears throat> uh, these, Raja's Custom Treasure. These will not work with the merchant. You'll have to, if you want to use these for dungeon mode, you'll have to pick some of them out because uh, stuff like where stuff like this add a spark to the counter then immediately discard first of all there's no sparks in dungeon mode and discard immediately items don't work because how can you discard it if you have to buy it like some of them will work like this but like these these won't work soul items don't work uh, the red eye orb doesn't work. Uh, this thing, that could work. But yeah, uh, those cards will not work for the merchant. You can try to find ways to make certain things work with the merchant. Like I said, homebrew it all you want. That's what it's made for. So I have six patrons tokens. I'll buy shit and get four more. Now I got ten patronage tokens. <clears throat> what I would do is uh maybe tint them. Can you tint them? Yeah, you can tint them. What I recommend is uh, either tinting them or labeling them in some way. <clears throat> and then placing them on the... Uh... Oh, you can just take one, actually. Just take one, tint it, place it on one of the categories. You can maybe shrink it if you want. To, uh, l you can use anything you want, really. This is just a suggestion. To mark it, essentially, which one you've used. So let's say, uh, oh, I have 10, so I can get any of these free uh, item on any of the categories. I want the Dragon Crest Shield. That's on the four soul category. So I'll place that here. I'll take that for free. And. There you go. So now you can no longer get a free item in the four soul slot unless you spend 20 tokens. You could still get an item on the other slots for 10 tokens, but not from four because you already used your patronage for that. So use the, I recommend the, uh, the color tint because let's say someone else has enough to get the same thing. These are per player, not per game. Is my phone buzzing? What the fuck do you want? Shut up. <clears throat> Let's say someone else gets a free item, the black armor. Uh, I sent it a different color, like uh, green. I missed something. Huh. Something strange in the neighborhood. Yeah, anyway, you can just do that. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be perfectly stackable, but you can see now... Uh, whoever's red and whoever's green has taken an item from the four soul slot for free. So you could just do this with like uh, however many people are playing. Let's just get uh, a blue. Blue's gotten that. Uh... <clears throat> Go orange. Orange has gotten that. So it's a four-player game with red, green, blue, and orange colors. 
and everyone got a free item from the four soul slot. So everyone could still get any of the other ones. So you need 20 tokens to get it from this. So yeah, that's how that works. And then you could spend a soul for your luck token to get refilled, your heroic your for three, your S is for five, and seven to buy an ember. Now, some extra fun for you. The merchant is not targeted by enemy attacks, but I exclusively say they abide by no limitation rules. And if I go here, I believe, but they can be pushed by other means. That's a little hint, by the way, for people who play dungeon mode. And uh, let's say you're playing uh, cooperatively with someone or uh, two other people. Maybe you got a three on three uh, match going or something. Wow, their bases are really different colors. Why is that? I don't know. <clears throat> but, uh, see the merchant's right there. You move here, your friend moves here, you get someone else to move, and you push the merchant. With this strategy, this is an exclusive developer strategy to you, the people playing. You can uh, use no limitations to push the merchant wherever you want. So you can push him off the bonfire tile so you can access the shop anywhere you want. Minus boss arenas because of fog walls. Which I always forget to place. Because it's it's a fucking rectangle. You know? But yeah. So you can just push this merchant around. Say, uh... There you go. Nice snap. Nice on. Put him here, push him out to the next tile. And look, he's in a different tile with enemies that can spawn. Keep in mind though, you can't access the shop if there are enemies on the tile, but you can use this as an opportunity to carry him around uh, for a few reasons. One, so you don't have to run all the way back to, you know, get to the merchant because your movement in dungeon mode is restricted to the same movement rules as in an encounter where every additional movement past one costs stamina and, you know, you have other players' turns to deal with, enemies and stuff. So if you're playing against someone else, like in teams, for instance, and you don't want someone to get the merchant, an example, or uh, you don't want to waste your time, maybe you're trying to go against them, try to beat the boss before them, competitive, um... And you don't want to waste your time going back and forth to the merchant while your opponents get ahead of the game. You just carry the merchant with you by pushing them. So, yeah. Just take them with you wherever you want. Just uh, be aware that <clears throat> they will remain wherever the fuck they're at. In case uh, something happens to you. Like if you die. Or uh, if you run away. Or if anything happens. You respawn the rooms. The merchant will stay where they're at. Because the merchant. Uh, 
it doesn't respawn at the bonfire tile because you know no he's not an enemy enemies respawn at their tiles the merchant does not So yeah. Yeah, included uh with the dungeon mode assets are bonfire encounters for level one, two, and three. Uh you can use as many of each as you want, really. For this example I just picked one level one, one level two, because I'm like, ah, it's a pretty small dungeon. You make the like I said, you can make the dungeon as big as this fucking table, which is massive. This table is massive. And it's only going to get bigger. Well, slightly. Slightly bigger. When I uh, resort everything. Also, I've aligned... Uh, I can't say the same for other boss boards. But the Mega Jester Thomas board, I've aligned to perfectly fit two encounter boards. So... You can rest easy and not panic about being OCD or aligning things because um, this boss board is two by two in terms of encounter tiles. So if you wanted this to be at the end or in the center, if you want this to be in the center of a like dungeon mode, you can. I have it set that way in the uh, challenges even. Right here, a 6x6 six six grid of Mega Jester Thomas board in the middle. So, yeah, you can do that. Uh, I don't know about the rest of the boss boards. <clears throat> Madeir's board is just a big fucking thing. It's huge. So, you know. Um... I have thought about redoing Madeir's board. One thing that bothers me about it is, like, it doesn't look bad right now, but, like, here's the problem. Right there. That's the problem. It's too, like, the, the tiles are too fucking big. Like, it looks like it'll take forever to get from one node to another, as opposed to the normal one. Like, look. This tile, like, uh, this node on this tile can fit, like, half the nodes on this tile inside of it. Too big. I thought about, like, it's this big because Madeir is a fucking big model, dude. Like... Look at him. He's huge. He's the biggest model in the game. I wanted to go bigger than Gaping Dragon, and I did. Look how big he is. But, uh... Yeah, what I thought about doing with his board was making it a 5x5 uh, a five five grid instead of a 4x4. Four because I just follow the mega boss rules, you know, because they're like, oh, there's four instead of three, like normal boss boards. Because they're bigger. But Madeir's is too big for four. I need five, I think. Which, uh, uh, it'll be a pain in the ass. You know? It's, uh,. Uh, the board wouldn't be as much of a problem to redo. Like, it's not that big a deal. But, like, um... The cards. I'd have to redo the board. And all of Madeir's cards. And, yeah, that'd suck. That would suck. Also, the layout of the sports... Uh... In my opinion, pretty nice. You have the uh, 
terrain like that and then the enemies like that it's a I don't remember how I came up with it I just kind of threw it together I was like eh, there we go yeah it's uh too big uh, another thing though is at some point I was also going to make more tiles one thing I have not done is make more tiles because you have you know the the core tiles you have the uh, you have the dark root iron keep tiles which I took a picture of them with my smartphone camera so they're not the best, but you know, they're okay. They're passable. Oh. Yeah, you know, they're passable. But uh, I wanted to make more tiles, actually. Just for some diversity, you know? The, uh, you know, Madeira's board, I literally got a, a cheat engine script to enable a free camera when in game and just took the free camera, just looked straight down, took a picture of this part of the Ring and City and Madeira's boss arena. And they turned out pretty damn well. So yeah, uh, I might do that with some more stuff in the game. Take picture of more locations, make them into tiles. At some point in the future, I was going to make encounter cards as well. Maybe some new enemies down the line. But, uh, yeah. As for now, I'm generally just taking a break from working on the mod because I just got done with a big update. I'm tired. Uh, right now, and I just mean in general. But, uh, yeah. Need to focus on other stuff like this streaming and other projects but uh, oh yeah uh, <clears throat> so I don't know if anyone's actually tried any of these challenges they're supposed to be difficult slash interesting different takes on the uh, you know the game formula you have the first one triple threat which uh, just fight the way four bosses at the same time. Uh, it sounds pretty difficult. It sounded difficult and I was like, that sounds cool. Let's do that. Uh, then I really started getting uh, more creative with the hunt. The season five challenge. Every, se every uh, update, I plan on adding a challenge of some sort. Having to do with the lore. So... <clears throat> the hunt is interesting and it's actually it actually inspired me to come up with a uh, another game mode idea which I will add at some point to the book of custom. I've been meaning to add it in the, like the past two ugh, two updates but I forgot. Essentially it's just a it's a boss rush. The hunt is a boss rush. You fight the bosses in order and you get upgrades at the after every boss and you get refills and you need to complete all the bosses without dying so yeah it's a pretty cool concept pretty fun idea and then this updates challenge the dungeon master 
you know, they also have stipulations like uh, the hunt. You can only play as the hunter or the summoner or, you know, both if you're playing co-op. And uh, the dungeon master, you can... Uh, you can't play as the hunter and summoner. <clears throat> and... Uh, if you're playing with the alchemist and magician, they cannot be allied. As it says right here. And it's dungeon mode, but uh, more fixated. It's less random. You need to feed a mini, main, and mega boss. You have a 5x5 five five grid for a mini boss, and you can't use Asylum Demon or Hydra. It tells you which encounter cards to use. The main boss is 7x7, seven seven, where you can't use Smelter Demon or Osiris. Uh, and the last board is a 6x6 six six grid with Mega Jester Thomas as the final boss. And <clears throat> in the Dungeon Master Challenge, uh, anytime you get invaded, you flip a coin, and if it's heads, you get invaded by Jester Thomas. If you summon a phantom, you flip a coin, and if it's heads, you summon Jester Thomas. So you have a very high chance of getting Jester Thomas constantly. And that's the point. So yeah. Uh, challenges. So uh, yeah, credits. <clears throat> like I said, this is the dev build. So uh, it's not the book's not updated yet to include Nameless King. Nor does the official version have Nameless King yet. Working on it. Just finished importing him today. I'll work on the book another time. I'm tired. Not going to be today. Maybe tomorrow. Depending what I'm doing tomorrow. So you got the credits. Uh, game modes. Okay. So game modes right now is just dungeon mode taking up two pages and it's probably going to continue to take up two pages. So I'll insert uh, you know more pages after this for other game modes. I do have other game modes by the way. I just don't have them in the book because I keep forgetting. Uh, I'll just tell you what they are. Uh, so you have the boss rush mode which works similarly to the hunt except it doesn't have to be fixed list of bosses you can set your own list the general rule is just two mini bosses two main bosses two mega bosses uh yeah uh you can do more if you want the rules still apply with to the hunt where you finish the first boss and you draw two cards and you pick one to keep and you put the other one back in the deck and you can equip the one you kept without any stat requirements. Essentially there's no level ups. It's a boss rush. After every boss you uh you know, refill everything, clear your endurance bar. It's fun. It's awesome. Another one, it's probably my oldest concept for a different game mode is uh, it's not really a game mode. It's like an alteration to the base game, which is boss aid. Essentially, uh, I have a list of bosses and depending if you play the game of boss aid, you play the game like normal, but like when you get to a boss, you like... Uh, I don't know, you like flip a coin, roll a die or something. Random generator. Uh, you do something to randomly determine if this boss fight has boss aid. And what that means is uh, among the list of bosses, I have another list of bosses that will help the specific bosses in a fight in different ways. Like... Uh, I don't think it's on this phone. It's on my old phone. I'll have to get that off of there. Essentially, 
So let me think of some of the ones I had. One of them, I believe, was Asylum Demon can aid... Uh, is that still... Okay, so Asylum Demon can aid Gaping Dragon. And... So... You're in Gaping Dragon's arena versus Gaping Dragon. And Asylum Demon shows up. I don't remember if there's any sort of stipulation of how he shows up or if he's just there. Uh, they alternate turns and they can damage each other. Another one I had was... Uh... uh, uh I think it was a yeah, Black Dragon Calamy assists uh Guardian Dragon. Where uh, I think halfway when Guardian Dragon's health is about half, Calamy can show up. And if you get his health down to a certain amount, he'll leave. They don't damage each other. Um Uh, a, there's a few more. One of them was like Pursuer aids the Old Iron King. Uh, yeah, I have some of them. Uh, that's written down somewhere. I'll have to look at it and figure it out. It was also, uh, you know, it's also outdated because, uh, I came up with that concept like uh, before before wave three, I think. Actually, like I knew about the pursuer, that's why I came up with the concept of pursuer helping old Iron King, but I wasn't sure. So yeah, uh, another bonus one I had was uh. After defeating the four kings, you can, uh, on the four kings tile, you can face Ornstein, Smo, Artorius, and Sif at the same time. They, like, alternate between Ornstein, Smo, and then Artorius, and Sif. And it's just madness. It's crazy shit. Another game mode idea I had was boss arena it's not boss rush where you uh face bosses in an order no boss arena is just a little fun stupid idea i had it serves no uh, mechanical purpose other than it's just entertaining essentially you just get a mega boss board you place a bunch of bosses on it and they fight each other you just draw their behavior cards and act out their damage and their attacks and stuff to each other as they would players. It's just a fun little thing to do. So yeah. Uh, more game modes will probably flood into my head at some point. Like, possibly when Dark Souls the role-playing game comes out, if I look at it, I see anything I could incorporate into this. I could make a game mode off of that. Maybe. Could possibly just make a separate rule book. This thing's getting big, by the way. This, uh... The Book of Custom is 35 pages. Uh, pretty soon it's probably going to be, like, 37 almost 40 pages it's almost as big as the actual games rule book that's how much shit is in this thing it's just ridiculous i got the back cover I don't know if anyone ever looks at the back cover, but like, 
Uh, I do change the back cover every update, actually. I just uh, find some nice artwork. I, uh, you know, I put it on the back cover. I swap it out. Last update, it was uh, the hunter, like, walking up on, like, uh, some kind of, like, ruins or something. Some, like, uh, worn down, like, buildings in the uh, town. It's really cool. I also have song lyrics that I put on the back that change every update. If you can guess what song they are, uh, good for you. You get a cookie. But I also have song lyrics at the uh, contents that I change every update. As well as uh, just a little random quote. And the introduction uh, is lore. The lore changes every update now. Ever since the last update, I introduced the concept of lore in a readable format. I've always technically had lore in the mod since uh, since the Way 4 update. But it hasn't been written like this. Season 5 update came out, I actually wrote lore. And in Episode 6 update here, you have... Uh, the lore progressing. So, yeah. One thing that tires me out every time I update this mod. One of the reasons why I usually uh, update in like... Uh, that's weird. Uh, one of the reasons I always update in like large amounts. Like, I have few updates in between with just lots of content packed in tight is because every single time I update the mod I have to update this book this 35 page book like uh, I need to add new pages of stuff depending on what stuff I put them in I have to insert them somewhere the pages that go after that I have to change increase their page number Make sure I fix any uh, incorrect information. Edit some things that I want changed. <clears throat> Add things that I forgot to put in. I need to update the contents here. And uh, this, this, not this. Uh, this, this table overview picture. I need to change. It. I literally need to update this every single time also the uh the preview images on the workshop i have to update those constantly as well and it's uh very tiring but when i re uh organize the table and condense it i won't have to uh it won't be as big a pain in the ass to uh you know do that over and over again every single time but yeah if you're uh if you're ever in the mood to play dark souls the board game and you need a good mod or tabletop simulator if you have tabletop simulator to play it on Say, uh, you don't have the room in real life for the game, or you don't have the game in real life, or you have the game in real life, but people you want to play it with don't live anywhere near you, or are unable to come visit you to play it, or vice versa, you'd be able to visit them and play it. You can go to Tabletop Simulator, go to the workshop, you can search for Dark Souls, it's the first result, Dark Souls Custom. Uh, or you could just search for it directly. You could, you know, it's the definitive Dark Souls the board game experience on Tabletop Simulator. It has every single bit of official content and then some. You just look at this book of custom here. It will answer just about everything you need to know about the mod what the fuck is in it, how you use this shit, uh, like this, you got the summoner, the stand user, 
some shit. A hunter. Do treasure cards. Do my closet effects. <laughs> it just tells you damn near everything, including, uh, you know, setting up certain things. There's a. Uh, house rules that other people on the Dark Souls the board game subreddit have made you can play with these you got the uh, holiday edition rulebook as well as other rulebooks down on the bottom left of the table all these house rules you can play with some random house rules I've come up with as well you got game modes which I'll add more at some point like I said and you got the credits, which will tell you who did what. All the people who did the stuff. <clears throat> a lot of the early stuff was everyone except me. Because uh, I didn't show up until Wave 2. Where I added the missing expansions that weren't on the workshop. So you got... All oh, these folks. Yeah, I start to get more active as the expansions go on. Yeah. As well as all the custom stuff that's totally made by other people. I mean, look at this. Look at all this stuff. Look at all these people making stuff. Huh. My name is uh, in a lot of places on this page, actually. <laughs> like, uh... Yeah, it's, uh... Hmm. All uh, all of this stuff on this page alone is all the content that's added with the last two updates. So yeah, lots of good stuff. Book of Custom, Dark Souls Custom. So yeah, uh. Uh, I, I, you know, I've done, I've looked over the table, uh, talked about stuff. I've explained some ideas I have, some things for the future. I've showcased some of the new uh, mechanics, new dungeon mode, the uh, bosses, enemies, characters. I've done a little play test here. But, uh, I'm just too tired to, uh, do like a in-depth play test like of the characters in dungeon mode especially by myself it'd be better uh, if I had someone else to help me but uh it'd just be better off period if I just wasn't so tired it was worth it though I got that shiny fucking book so uh, I'm looking forward to that in uh May I think it's coming out It's like it comes out in May or some shit. I don't know. But, uh... Yeah. Uh... If you enjoy, uh, the mod, go check it out. Like, I implore you. See if it tickles your fancy. Give me feedback of stuff. Uh... I'm always open to uh, people who want to add their stuff into my mod. If you want to ask me uh, about me putting something of yours into this mod, I'm generally down for that. As well as uh, if you are able to supply any missing assets, I am 
totally for that as well. Like missing assets generally include uh, uh there's only five armor figurines for the characters expansions here. There's supposed to be ten, but I couldn't get models of the other five. So you yeah, know. Uh Vort doesn't have a model. Just has a stand in JPEG. Last Giant doesn't have a model. Same deal. Excuse's Chariot doesn't have a model. Same deal. Vort. I already said Vort. I'm tired. A lot of the Phantoms are like that too. I, uh, I cut out the, the official PNGs uh, from the rule book, which they actually came out pretty nice. Like, from afar, if looking at the front, they kind of just look like 3D models. I mean, they look good because uh, they did a good job sculpting these models for the actual game. Like, Beatrice actually looks like that. It looked really good. But, like, uh, I'd rather have 3D models, you know? So, uh, yeah, I'd be down with... Uh, putting in missing assets it's mainly just 3d models I have like all the other stuff uh, another thing I wanted to do uh, with the remastered project was I wanted to add <laughs> uh either multi language support or uh different versions of the mod in other languages because uh the actual board game comes in different languages like every uh expansion generally has duplicates of the cards that have like writing on them in different languages and, um, uh, you know, I just, uh, I feel like the game is not complete unless it has everything. Everything includes the, uh, other languages besides English. Like, that'd be sick. Hell, maybe even, uh, languages the game doesn't have. That'd be cool. I'm not looking for any sort of uh, translating right now or anytime soon. The remastered project is something for the future. When I'm on board with it, then I'll bring it back up. But, you know. Yeah. Alright, well, I'm going to kick off a bit early today because... Uh, I've my body's had it. It's so exhausted. I can barely even spit out a joke at this point. But uh, spitting a joke's better than swallowing a joke. Uh... So tomorrow. I don't fucking know what I want to do tomorrow. Uh... Tomorrow! We'll see. We'll see what we'll do tomorrow. Uh, I'll uh, update the stream information uh, before stream tomorrow with what we're doing. So if you want to know before the stream, then just pay attention to that. So that's it for today's stream. I hope you're well informed and absolutely exhilarated by my full of life commentary, my energized ugh, being.
my uh my fully awake uh showcase of Dark Souls Custom. I love you. <laughs> uh see you tomorrow or something. Bye.